It's time to grout the utility room floor. So I'm mixing up a little bit of grout. And I'm just focused on this room here. Yesterday we did tile kind of meandering out and half our kitchen is done, but this is priority so we can get our water heater and everything back in here. I got just a little bit of grout. This should be a quick project. I don't think I've mixed up nearly enough grout. I guess it just looked like more in the can, but it's fine. We'll get done what we can. As you can see, the floor is finished and it looks so good. I got all the grout dry now and I cleaned up all the excess, polished it, buffed it. So, looks really good. It's time to trim out around the bottom of the walls to hide that gap. And what I'm gonna use is this quarter round. I actually picked this up, uh, marked down 70% off and I didn't know what I was gonna use it for, but it's gonna work good in here. So that looks really good. Look at that. That's perfect. Yep. So we got this corner water heater pan just because I thought it looked cool. Uh, fits the area well. And as you can see, I wanted it right up against the walls. So happy with that. Now to get the water heater in here. Now, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but we grabbed these blocks that we had outside and they're just short little concrete blocks. And the idea is that if we can suspend the water heater up a little bit, um, it'll keep it out of any water if it should leak, but also it'll raise this um, draining valve, right, spigot? I guess so, yeah. yeah. This draining valve up a little higher so it's easier to hook a hose up to it and drain it without it being low in the pan, hitting that edge. So that's kind of the reasoning behind that. We'll see how it feels when we get it in place and hopefully we don't have to take them back out. So unfortunately, we gotta drain the water heater because I don't think we're gonna be able to safely move it into the pan. I did get the hose ready, so hopefully this doesn't go too bad. feel like it's not draining, but it's hard to tell. I'm hoping there's not ice in the hose. So this hose actually does have a clog. I could feel the ice in it, unfortunately. So I don't think it's gonna drain anytime soon. We could thaw it out, but that's gonna take a while. So I think I'm just gonna try a different hose. And that's this hose. 
which is not long, but I'm thinking I can kind of shove it in the drain and at least get some of the water out, right? Yeah. This will be interesting to see. That's better. So we'll keep this draining and we'll come back when it's empty. This was actually a contraption that was left here by the previous owners and it was this little five gallon shop vac with this hose attachment hooked to it. And I think what they used it for was winterizing the house when they went away uh, for the winter. They would use it to suck the water out of the water lines down at the uh, well tank and everything. They would just put it on the uh, a valve down there and kind of suck it clean so that it didn't freeze up while they were gone. We drained the water heater. It's time to bring it in. Got my block set up. Got a piece of wood here that I think is going to help me. The water heater is a lot lighter now, so it should go pretty easy. Just want to try to tilt it up on it. So, okay. Now you gotta help me. It's on it. It's okay. You can let it sit on that. Okay, it's in the pan. Good. I don't want to over tighten these. I just want to do a little, just a little, you know, quarter turn. Not even there. That should be good. We still don't have our overflow on, but we're gonna add that soon for the uh, safety valve. I guess I'll turn on the water and then we'll hook up the electrical afterwards. That way all the leaks are done. Okay. And we won't accidentally burn out. You guys, you never want to hook up live power to your water tank before it's filled with water because the heating elements will burn out. Okay. Make sure they're tight. I wanted to put a strap on here. I was gonna take this screw out and put a, a strap on there. I wonder if I have one. We don't see any leaks, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this foam up the best I can. Probably should wrap it with tape later. Um, I'm happy with how it all looks. The blocks, I think, support it enough. I like that they raise it up a little bit. It just makes it easier to get a hose on here, work. And like I said, if water does get in here, at least it's not sitting, the metal isn't sitting in it, rusting. Yeah. Looking good in here. We still have to make our hole in the tile there. Yeah. Over here. We actually have a hole in the subfloor that I forgot to make through the detrend tile, but the uh, the overflow drain is gonna come out the side here and go straight down and then outside. The water heater is working awesome. So now I guess I'm gonna work on putting this door in. You guys might remember that we bought a louver door for this. So that's gonna look really cool here. I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed and we'll have another job out of the way. This looks really good. When I hang doors, I usually take the door slab, you know, the door off and I hang the frame, the uh, hinge side of the frame first and then I hang the door back on it and then I uh, secure the rest. Today I just didn't feel like pulling this off the hinges so I did it a little differently and I just shimmed up my opening so that 
this ball was plum, plum, and then I could just put this in and tack it in. It looks really good, it looks perfect actually. So I'll throw a few more nails in it here and there, and then I'll come back and throw some screws through the hinges to secure it a little more. Ooh, sloppy, this one's really sloppy. Look at this. Look how sloppy they put these screws in. I can't stand stuff like this. It's at a straight angle, sticking out, sticking out. Really sloppy work. So I'll probably just pull these screws right out and put a solid screw straight in. So we got the door fully installed, it's looking really good, and we're ready to start putting our pantry shelving in here. I made sure I had enough space in the utility room for two shelves side by side here for extra storage, and I've been so looking forward to this moment of getting these shelves in place. So let's roll them in here, and we'll start organizing our excess food and batteries and junk that we just want to store in here. Looking really cool, fits perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and load these up with our stuff, but technically I will have to roll this one out of the way later because I still gotta do a little bit of trim in here just on the uh, inside of the door and on the floor right there. I guess I'm done organizing that for now. We got a few more things that I actually have to go in here, but I'm not worried about it. It'll happen when it happens. We got some dishes that need to be cleaned and odds and ends in the kitchen still, but it's looking pretty good. Got a lot of food storage here. We did put, you probably can't see it, but we got a bunch of paint cans at the bottom on the floor underneath the shelves. We have to store our paint cans inside right now because it's winter time. We don't want to freeze it up in the barn. Hopefully, as we end the renovation, we can get rid of some of those cans and have less clutter in here. I got my tool charging station down here, so I got all my batteries. So I have a place to plug those in finally. And some dishes and stuff. Pretty cool. It feels good in here. I was worried it was going to feel crowded, but it feels really nice, like a little pantry. Really like the louver door. Let's airflow in here. Uh, it'll keep it uh, heated, keep it from getting stale. This is looking really, really awesome. Feels good to have this room coming together. One thing is we got our electric panel behind the door here and something that I made sure I maintained when I was designing this room was my clearance for the breaker panel. So if you guys ever do any work in your home, you got to maintain at least three feet of open space in front of your breaker box. And I have three feet to the front of the shelf, so it's perfect from the breaker panel to the front of the shelf. Typically, you'd need three feet by 30 inches access. So we have that. We got access to the water tank, access to the water filter. It's a small but functional room. And I actually put the switch on the outside. Hmm. And I did that because, um, well, I just figured it's easier to turn it on and off from out there because it's a small room. And also I knew these shelves were gonna be in here and it'd be awkward to have to reach into a shelf to hit the switch. So we decided to put it on the outside. So there it is guys, we got another big project complete. Pantry utility room is checked off the list. I'll probably work on painting the door soon. Should I say that? <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, doing the trim work on the both sides and all that stuff. So that'll probably come soon. Actually this project went smooth for a change. Having the water heater unhooked uh, wasn't too bad, we made it. Just a couple days getting the tile laid, getting the grout down, and it hooked back up with no problems. Everything went really smooth, and that's been a nice change because so many things have been going wrong for us lately during this renovation that it's been discouraging, so it's nice to have a project that just goes smoothly. With this done, we can start moving on with more of the kitchen, get the rest of the floor tiled, that would be cool. But I guess we're gonna wrap it up now, so as always, we appreciate you guys watching, and until next time, take care. Bye.